I've been studying Hitler a lot mm. recently. I've been reading uh, probably way too much. And it's it's interesting to think about all the possible trajectories right. uh, that uh, could have avoided the this indiv particular individual developing the hate that he did, the following that he did, the the actual final, uh, th there's a few turns in him psychologically where he went from being a leader that just wants to conquer and to a, uh, somebody who al allowed his anger and emotion to take over, to where he started making mistakes for uh, in terms of militarily speaking, mm -hmm. but also started doing you know evil things. Mm -hmm. And uh, all the possible trajectories that could have avoided that are fascinating, including he wasn't that bad at painting, at, at drawing. Right, right. That's, that's true. That is <laughs> From true. the very beginning. And, uh, and his time in Vienna, there's all these possible things to, uh, to think about. And of course, there's millions of others like him that never came to power and all those kinds of things. Uh, so, but that goes to the second question on the, on the side of evil. Do you think... And and Hitler's often brought up as like an example of somebody who is like the epitome of evil. Do you think you would, if you got that same phone call after World War II and Hitler survived uh, during war, you know, uh, the trial for war crimes, would you take the case defending uh, Adolf Hitler? If you don't want to answer that one, is there a line to draw for evil, for who to not to defend? No, I think I think everyone. I'll do the second one first. Everyone has a right to a defense if you're charged criminally in in the United States of of America. So, uh, no, I, I do not think that there's someone so evil that they do not deserve a um, defense. Uh, process matters. Uh, process helps us get to results uh, more accurately than we would otherwise. So it is important and it's vitally important and indeed more important for uh, someone deemed to be evil to receive the same quantum of process and the same substance of process that anyone else would. It's vitally important to the health of our criminal justice system for that to uh, happen. So yes, uh, everybody, uh, Hitler included, uh, were uh, he charged in the United States for a crime that occurred in the United States um, uh, yes. Um, um, whether I would do it if I were a public defender and assign the case, uh, yes, I started my career as a public defender. I represent anyone who was uh, assigned to me. Uh, I think that is our, uh, our duty, uh, in private, uh, uh, practice, uh, I have choices, uh, and I, I likely, Based on the hypo you gave me, and I would tweak it a bit because it would have to be a a, a U.S. United crime States, and, yeah, yes. and so. But but I get the broader point and don't want to bog down in technicalities. I'd I'd likely uh, pass uh, right right now as I I see it, unless um, it was a case where no nobody else would 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 represent him. Uh, you know, then uh, I, I would I would think that I have some sort of duty and and, and obligation. Uh, to 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 do it, uh, but yes, everyone uh, absolutely deserves a, a right to competent counsel. That is a beautiful ideal. It's difficult to think about it in the face of public pressure. It's just, I mean, um, it's kind of terrifying to watch the masses during this past year of 2020 to watch the power of the masses to make a decision before. Uh, any of the data is out, if the data is ever out, any of the details, any of the processes. And I, and there is an anger to the justice system. There's a lot of people that feel like, even though the ideal you describe is a beautiful one, it does not always operate uh, justly. <laughs> it does not operate to the best of its ideals. It uh, operates unfairly.